it would give a very high confidence to, to the training training points. To, to use what the soft max response? Well, well, any test right? It doesn't really depend on the, on the, the, the soft max right? Yeah, any but if, if you classify as severely overfit, it will, it will have a very high confidence in training. So very very high response yeah. in training, but on test, it will be ah, very the, low. These, uh, the, the G is trained on test data? No, I think I think I think it's yeah. done on the training. Data. Yeah, because that's, that's, yeah. I think a bit of a problem, right? Because if your your real data is any different from your trained data, then then all these bounds are essentially meaningless. Yeah, but then you define a validation set. So you, you split your data in three. You have a train set for the classifier, then a test set for G, and then a validation set for to validate your threshold. So it's kind of like pushing the. No, I think, I think what they did is they, they trained normally with train uh, and uh, test sets for F. Mm -hmm. And then once they finished with that, they took again the, the whole set of data and they split it again, train and test, and they trained G. That, that's a different Yeah, I think your point is valid. And it's funny because there are two separate things that are training. I think it's a valid point in that you also have to be careful with the machine learning part. That you cannot overfit, you shouldn't underfit either. Uh, yeah. But these bounds very strongly depend on the data being distributed as it is in, in, in the in the So so out of out of distribution would be completely out of the, out of the picture. Yeah, this is not our distribution detection, right? It's rejection. We're just rejecting samples. <laughs> That's why I probably wouldn't put it into a self driving car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, uh, just a technical question. If yeah. we go on the slide that you're here, four, if you top left, four explicitly, two, fourth line down. Wait, uh, right. do, I have to, do I have to scroll up or down? No, that mm. symbol, can you see the symbol there that is um, greater than zero? No, I can't. Delta. Delta. Thank you. Yes. That's it, technical. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah, that's Delta. Uh, okay. Um, so. I was going over the uh, different confidence rate functions. So yeah, as I was saying, um, your 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 soft match response is not anything to do with thresholding. It's just the largest value, and they don't give a they give a kind of explanation about um, they, they give an intuitive way to understand how soft match response might work by looking at this diagram of the. Uh, so it's the average response for every neuron in the second to last layer of an MNIST classifier for the number eight. Uh, so the x axis is every um, neuron, and then the uh, y axis is the average. It shows the average activation for a um, green square being a true positive, and I think yeah, and then the red circle is a false negative. So I'll just zoom in just so. So, um, so if you can, if you see from, can everyone see this? But well, just if you can't, just take it from me that every true positive corresponding to every neuron in the second to last layer, um, the average um, activation, so just how big the number is, is greater for a true positive than for a false negative classification. So I think then they tie it up by... So, uh, so yeah, so the, the activation of on the second to last layer for true positives tends to be higher than false negatives on, on in general. And then hence, um, we can expect that to also happen in the final softmax layer. So, um, that's kind of, I mean, it's not really any sort of anything rigorous, but it's just a way to kind of understand why softmax um, soft response might work. Uh, and then now the other thing they consider is MC dropout. So that's Monte Carlo dropout I talked about at the start. And um, to, so now that you, as I said, you have dropout at test time. So what you do is for a given instance X, you run it through the uh, neural network several times and then you can build the variance of, so from those, um, from those outputs, you can build a variance of the most probable class. 
and the uncertainty is um, going to, yeah, so the uncertainty of your prediction is going to be the variance given that input, and then we can actually set our uh, confidence. I'm just going to write it so you can do con so uh, minus. So you can set your um, confidence rate function as a minus variance. So that kind of answers your question. You don't, it doesn't have to be related specifically to solid. And then that gets thresholded by G, which then you learn in that process. And is there any further comments on that? I mean, just interrupt me. Why only the variance? Why not also the mean? I would think you have a plus. In the end, you also have a mean. So what would, how would you propose to change that? That if, if my output of the, I guess the softmax uh, the multiple form of yeah. it's, it's variance, but it's still very high instead of lower. So, I would think, so, so, it, so there's a variance, the variation in the response, yeah. right, but also have a mean. I would think a high mean with respect to everything else. It's still the kind of well, I think I think you're mixing them up. So MC dropout is a completely different method. So it's no, no. But, but 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 why not take it also? What would you do with the mean? What mean what mean? So so softmax we have been, so we have a softmax high in, in a sense. Uh, also so in oh, you, okay. I think it's easy to ask. Pro kind of proposing you kind of can well, combine. Well, I, I was just um, yeah, but in a, the yeah, in a traditional deep network, you don't do dropout at test, right? You just do no, drop out and not, train. But I was just, yeah, yeah. because I was looking, going towards a conclusion, but I think MC drop out didn't come out so, so, so good, right? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and then I thought, yeah, but I, I'm not sure so I need to do it like this, I guess. I, I think they even say in the paper that these two um, confidence rate functions are far from the best ones, sure. but they do end up performing quite well. So, if you, you know, I think they're encouraging people to find out, maybe to play around with them, but yeah, they, they're not saying these are. The best ones, I think. Yes. What was the variance you were talking about earlier? The variance? Yeah. So, um, so you get the, um, when you, you you run the same input through the, uh, ah. the network. The drop out variance. The, the drop out, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's like that you, you take a minus and that's your yeah. um, confidence. So, yeah, those are the two they propose here. And I'm not proposed, um, they test, but I think there's others that you can use. Into it. And now the uh, now I'm just going to the empirical results. So we have the risk coverage curves. So they plot. Uh, I think I think it's the selective risk over the coverage. And on yeah. So then we just see that. And then on the Cypher 10 and Cypher 100, I think they perform quite um, similarly, but then I think on uh, the image net, it's significant, um, uh, MC dropout tends to perform significantly worse. So, uh, so here's the, so this is the Cypher 10. Uh, 